Okay, at 6.30, I'd like to call the uh, May 9th, 2023 Power Town Council meeting to order. Before we get started, I'd like to remind people in the room and also people online, this meeting is being recorded and participation in the meeting is your consent to be recorded and to the rebroadcast of the meeting. The recorded meeting is available on the town's YouTube channel. Roll call, please. Passenger? Present. Bill Giffins? There. Bill Hamm? Here. Sally Ricciardi? Here. Rich West? Present. Please all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So everyone had a chance to, <coughs> pardon me, everyone had a chance to, on the council, review the April 25th, 2023 minutes? Yes. I would move to be approved on the minutes. Mr. West moved to approve. Is second. there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Ham. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the Michiana Area Council of Government Electric Vehicle Charging Grant. So last meeting, you had some questions, so Lee is here to answer them all. Yeah. <laughs> I could also give a brief background on your existing statement as well. Excuse me, yeah. would you identify yourself, yes. please? I'm Leah Phil, I'm with the Michiana Area Council of Governments, offices in South Bend. Thank you. Yeah, so you have one charging station currently that's operated by the town that was installed a little over a year ago and that station uh, was funded through grant funding of ten thousand dollars nine thousand dollars of that came from the private volkswagen settlement administered through the state uh, 500 from macog and 500 from nipsco so that ended up covering um, the bulk of the costs the total project was about fifteen thousand dollars and so the town uh, ended up contributing 35% of the cost, or just over $5,000. Um, in comparison, we are now applying for a federal grant that would cover 80% of the of a project's cost. So that's a higher percentage than what the other opportunity covered. Uh, wanted to provide you a little bit of background on the existing station and the usage it's getting, but I've heard that it's pretty fairly, fairly well used and there were some folks charging there when it went by this evening. Uh, so within the last year, it used just over seven megawatt hours. Uh, there were 102 unique drivers. That's unique, different people with different cars using the station in 2022, just over 100. Um, 45 people, unique individuals so far this year. And the peak months, no surprise, starts in July, goes till about October. Um, and you've seen a peak of about 75 sessions per month, but I expect that to continue as EV adoption increases. Um, the operating cost currently is about a little over $1,000 a month, in, or sorry, a year in electricity costs when you look at that seven megawatt hour price. Um, so keep that in mind when we talk about um, the price to charge for people to use the station. Do you want to go into that? No. Just directly or? No, no. Talk about the green. Okay. Talk about the green. Okay. Because I'm happy to also. Um, answer questions about what should it cost and what does that mean for the cost of gasoline? So, um, so the current grant, we anticipate that the cost of the stations will be a little higher because it's been several years. Um, and in addition, the project requires to have four ports minimum capable of charging four vehicles simultaneously. Uh, I believe that that is overbuilt for the current times. 
Um, so what I'm recommending is that only two of the parking spaces are signed or reserved for EVs, and that the other two would be flex spaces that are first come first served, so that um, there's not conflict with taking more parking than you're seeing from vehicles. Um, so that that's the minimum project size that would be required to be included in our federal grant. Um, currently, we are focusing on rural areas and small towns because that's where we see uh, you know we see urban areas getting this investment. Maybe Whole Foods or places are putting these in. We're not seeing that in the private market. We're seeing um, a lack of investment, which is why our application is focused in large part on small towns. So our guests were including Middlebury, Winona Lake, North Liberty, Plymouth. Um, their handful of others as well. So I talked to Bob about whether there's interest um, in expanding the existing station to include two more, possibly by the visitor center or wherever it would get the most use. Um, but we were we also looked at the school. We felt that was way overbuilt to have four over by the school by the ball field, and then Kohler Academies. We just uh, couldn't find any parking lot to work with them as a partner. That would be both have sufficient electric service there. So with that background. Um, I have plenty more, plenty more information I can share for the rest of the specific question. Then. When you were searching that sites, did you check the library? We did. Uh, I drove by there. I felt like the parking lot was a little small. Um, I really don't like taking up a large percentage of parking where it's more limited. I don't feel comfortable with that, even with two spaces. Um, but we could have more conversations if the library as a partner, as the site host, would want to dedicate that. Does this take three phase? It does not. So this is, I call it destination level charging. It's slow, about 25 miles every hour. So you sit there for half a day, you have 100 miles added. This is not something where someone is passing through on their way to Indianapolis, stopping for 30 minutes. This is someone to come here and stay for a long time. So it, it would charge slower than the ones that we. Yeah. So that's about the speed that they charge. Oh, same speed. Yeah, it's not like um, plugging into a regular outlet. That uh -huh. takes days. Yeah. This destination level takes hours, and then you measure fast charging along highways in minutes. Is there a reason we're not looking at a faster charge? The cost would increase by about a factor of 10. So a $10,000 plug becomes a $100,000. So that answers most people's curiosity on the matter. Um, we could include it if there's the local match for 20% and interest in providing that. Certainly no one is going to put it here um, if the town doesn't play a role in that for some time. Uh, but I feel you know people living in the condos, if they plug in overnight at a station, they should have sufficient charge by morning uh, to satisfy that kind of use. And there are no restrictions on this one as far as our um, we getting reimbursed for the cost of this. And charging a fee for using it. So the restrictions are that it needs to be reasonable to the operating cost that it it costs you for the first five years. After five years, you can charge whatever you want. So the goal is that it's not a net loss to the town on the operating side. Currently, your unit is free, so it's all expense. But the idea is you would set the fee so that it um, cancels out all your costs for the electricity, credit card fee, but as far as charging to make a significant profit, what I think would happen is people just would not use it, except for the very rare guest if you charge three, four times electricity. Um, but the federal grant also says it must be reasonable. We were told a consultant recently that the average uh, national cost per kilowatt hour is 45 cents, I believe. Is that considered reasonable? Uh, cost for charging a vehicle? The, the fee to charge a vehicle. Um, that's probably coming from the Electrify America prices, which are somewhere around 43 to 45 cents per kilowatt hour. That's generally what is charged um, for the fastest charging. Um, those units are capable of fully charging the vehicle in 20 to 30 minutes. Here we're talking capability of eight to 12 hours. So there you're really paying for the convenience and the speed of you're stopping at a gas station for a few minutes and you're continuing on your way. That's where those $100,000 um, infrastructure investments are being paid back through those higher costs. Are there just two different speeds in which they charge? Essentially, there's three. There's plugging into a regular outlet. Yeah, yeah. There's the destination level, which is 240 volts. And then there's the three-phase power that was mentioned, which is where you're paying 
45, 50, even 50 cents a kilowatt hour, but typically somewhere in the 40s, unless you're a member of some um, company. Yes, so level two charging, which is the destination level, uh, all cars take the same plug except for Tesla. All Tesla drivers have an adapter to use it. That gets a little different when we talk about level three, there are a couple different standards. But at level two, you don't have to worry about, as long as you don't put in a Tesla specific charger, anyone will be able to use it. And at peak time during July, yeah. how many hours per day? I assume those would be Saturday and Sunday, maybe. I can get you a detailed breakdown in whatever way you would like it and get you a report if you'd like to see what those peak times are. Thank you. Thank you. And you said the cost is 10,300 folks. So I estimate the local match will be about $10,000 for the four state or the four parking spaces, which is two units. I estimate the total local match will be about $10,000. Now, MACOG, um, through our general fund, we have set aside some money just to help small companies um, to pay their local match. So we would be willing to dedicate up to three thousand um, dollars towards that ten thousand out of our general funds. Uh, we're not doing that for other private parties or nonprofits or cities, but uh, we have set aside some money to help offset that somewhat. What do you say reasonable cost for charging? Can you prorate that installation ten thousand into that? Um, I would argue that you can because if you were a business and you wanted to have a rate of return that was reasonable. Uh, well, it's not so much an ROI. I'm just trying to keep you would, the two similar. Yeah. So you, you would include your upfront cost, which could include the remaining seven thousand. That would make sense to me. To do that. I think that would be reasonable. And that's the installed cost. Uh, the total installed cost. I mean, because last time that was part of our match, was like I believe we. Well, last time it was. This one's different. So, the, so this is rolled into that. Um, the ins this is the installed cost. So yes. it's hardware. Five, for okay. five year software subscription, five year parts and labor warranty. At the end of five years, whatever you want to do at the station, you're prerogative. Our plan currently is for MACOG to technically retain ownership of it. We would have access to the reporting, but functionally, you would serve it with electricity, you would collect the revenue into your bank account. Um, we're just sort of overseeing and managing the project throughout the five year reporting period. Um, the one thing we need to include you in the grant, uh, which is due at the end of May, is a letter of support um, from the town. So if there's interest, I did draft a letter. I don't know if I um, circulated, but oh, yeah. I, I have copies I can leave after folks want to look at that. But um, it breaks down just the roles and expectations roughly of the grant, um, the fact that MACOG would try to help with the 20% match, and um, kind of explains your current situation with one charger and um, the need for charging in smaller communities. So. Will you also promote this? Will it appear on maps someplace if this is yeah. if there's a charging station? That'll be on federal map, it'll be on the source map, it'll be on whatever the platform that it's link, charge point, EV go would be on theirs. So people would use their smartphones and the action tonight or it'll be the next meeting when I have time to call it over. Um, next meeting for two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Okay, I was some towns only meet monthly. Two weeks yeah. is perfectly fine. End of the month is when I need the letter. So you can get it to me by May 25th. I'd rather you have the time to think about it. Um, I don't want to push you. No, I don't want to push you to make a decision um, at all. So I will just leave with you the letters of the letter of support draft, which I'm happy to change any of the language. So that it fits your community better in your country. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the public hearing for Ordinance 2023-008, reestablishing the Kuhn Cap Development Fund. May I have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. That's been moved by Mr. Dickens. A second. Second. Second by Mr. Ham. 
Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Public hearings open at 6.42. Pardon? Would you like me to introduce this? Would you please, Karen? Yes. So um, the Cumulant Capital Development Fund is a fund that um, we already have in existence. There's already a cap rate attached to it, and that tax rate is a point. 0427, so basically 4.27 cents per $100 of assessed value on your home. Um, that, that, um, the state basically, um, when they initiated this, you could, you would set the rate at five cents, and then over time, that rate would fall. Um, it was like a rolling type of thing. Recently, the state re, um, did some rules and said if you reestablish your team cap fund, one at five cents, you're done. It will stay at five cents per ongoing. You don't have to go up to these people. The last time we established this, or we established it was back in like 13 or 14, so it's been a while. Um, that fund is used, has been used in the past for Sandy Hill Farm infrastructure, uh, matching funds for Cadillac Park and the Beach Lodge, purchase of the area, fire truck, other um, information. There was a, a handout at the door, so if you didn't get it, there are a couple of others. I have some up here. Um, if you want to pass it around for anybody who didn't receive it. So um, basically right now what you're looking at, if your home is assessed at $250,000, the current rate that you're paying on that tax is $106.75 with the increase that would um, increase to $125 per year. So that's a difference of $18.25. Um, and then I went, you know, that ranges from 250 I also went up to a million dollars. I know it's probably not a whole lot of us in this room, but for kicks and giggles, um, the current uh, the current tax rate would be is four hundred twenty seven dollars. If you took that assessment for next year um, at five cents, it would be five hundred dollars. So it'd be a difference of seven. Um, and just to let you know too, it's on that paper, but um, this year we're receiving ninety five thousand seven hundred ten dollars. And if it's based on this year's assessment, I don't know what the assessment is going to do if those assessments will change next year. That's out of my hands. Um, but based on assessed value this year and the five cent, we would receive 112,073.68. So that would be a difference of $16,362.70. Any questions on part of the public? Yes, please identify yourself. And what the reason for establishing this hasn't had a just multi um what's what the money is needed to and is this something that can't is this a budget issue? In other words, we've spent money that we now need to raise this money to cover something else. Um, it was part of a plan. Is it something? Why is this being done now? Okay, so and then the one other thing I just put as I was And are you telling me that this rate that you've attached now is the max rate? It will never be raised. It's at that five that five cent. Is absolutely next. Okay, so I'm going to go backwards because yeah, that's um, there was a lot to take in and get a lot to remember. So you should have to remind me of your questions. <laughs> so is this the maximum and it's not going to change? I don't have control over that. That's something that's set by the legislature. Okay, so right now that five cent is the maximum that they've set for that, that fund. That's as high as it can go right now. Okay, um, so you're going to have to work backwards with me. What was your second to last? Well, Either why is, why are you establishing the fund now? What's the money for? So and basically, the the money is used can be used for capital items. Um, as I said, and on that paper, we use it for a number of items: uh, the purchase of the aerial truck, um, the air bottles for the fire department, EMS radios. Um, we have a number of projects coming up in the utilities department that we could use this money for. And we're really trying not to take out a bond to pay for those projects. And so if we can build up some of these funds in this area, we can 
use it for um, some of the utility problems as well. Um, so, and that's something that I'm trying to get on the paper as far as gathering everybody plans so we can plan out for the next five to 10 years and see where we're at. Okay, so this is capital expenditures only. Yeah. Is capital. The only thing that may be that's included in there is the ten thousand dollars that we pay the market value of the development. I'm not appealing the match financial side of the development. They can use store and it's very high time. And so we just okay. kept it in and, and just and just um finally that energy to the gentleman to the farmer and we're going to be building bonds for the dunes development. But by the way, I don't want to start that as much as what happens. It is, is if that just that that would be, you don't want to build a bond because that would be ambitious and debt that's going to be associated with that project. So we have to remember that that dunes project and any bonds associated with that would be added for the with the redevelopment commission. So that's separate from a your bond. Okay. Any other questions from the audience? Yes, sir. Um, uh, is there a reason that we're raising it to five percent? Because that's the maximum money that you can go, the maximum rate that you can go. The the time to do it is this period of the year before the tax review. So there's a lot of processes that we have to go through, and as far as getting ready for the 2024 budget, so you have to establish these rates. Anything that's going to change now, that. Um, it's just the maximum that we can go, and I'd like to just reestablish it now because if I don't, really, it's, it needs to be reestablished at some point because it's just continued. It's going to continue to fall over here to five. Okay, exactly. Point what now? 4.27. 0.0427 is what the rate is currently. It started at five cents in 2014, I believe. I think that's when we reestablished it, but I could be wrong. Um, I've slept a little bit since then. So it 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 moves down each year. Um, and honestly, I I did not um, I did not go into all the mechanic mechanisms that are in place by the state. So um, in order to understand why it goes down, I just know it goes down periodically. So we reestablish it now up to five cents. We're done. We never have to do this again for this fund. Anyone online? Hi, this is uh, Doug Farmer, 225 Lakeview. Can you hear me, Bill? Yes, I can hear you, Doug. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, thank you. Quick question. I, I read through the ordinance, I don't, or the, the statue. I'm not sure who sent it out, but so, so Karen, and maybe I just misunderstood what what the intent uh, of this fund was for. But at the bottom of it, it says basically that um, it could be made available based on declaration of public safety or something something to that extent. So it sounds like this is put being put aside for potentially uh, capital type projects, infrastructure type projects. So if, if that's the case, if, if that's the case, does that align itself with the statute? It does. Um, so there's a number of different QMCAP funds that are available. Um, and it, this is one item that we could use it for is capital development, capital projects, the utilities, um, if, if the utility projects that we have for the water and sewer plant are would be considered capital projects. Okay, so so according to that statute, then there there is no requirement for, for the funds to be made available based on a public safety matter, right? It's it's either or. I think there's actually a public safety cum fund, if I remember correctly. Okay. Well, yeah, I was just reading the statute that, I, and again, it was sent out a couple of days ago, indicating that this was going to be part of the agenda, and I, so I just read that statute, and at the very end of it, there were like there were like uh, two, two two variables of of the funds being uh, made available for use. And one of them said that it was it was predicated on the town uh, declaring some sort of safety issue. But again, may, maybe there's more to the statute than just what was simply sent out. So I wanted to understand a little bit better how those funds can be made available for for expenditure. 
Yeah, I mean, basically we have to budget that during the budget time that we're entering into, we will budget monies out of that for specific projects. Um, you know, if you're public safety, we we purchased we purchased a lot of things. So my brain is not, you know, I tried to put a list together of what it had been, what we'd purchased out of it. Um, I think we we're we had talked about maybe purchasing one of the squad cars out of it. I don't know that that's happened. I know um, we we use money out of there towards the aerial front for the fire department. Um, so there's a variety of items that we use that money for in the past. But we've also used it for sidewalks. So which is where the sidewalk the sidewalk program that we have the funds for that project come out of that that fund as well. Does that answer your question? Um. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it gets close. Thank you. All right. Hearing no others, I'd have a motion to close the public hearing, please. It's been moved by Mr. Second. West. Second. Second by Ms. Rashardi. Any <clears throat> discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by the same sign? Nay. New code. Four yeas and one nay. Okay, then we're done. Okay. Next in the agenda is the first reading of Ordinance 2020. Wait, that was just. Oh, I'm sorry. No, hi. For the public hearing. Okay. okay, thank you, Bill. I'm sorry. I'm All right. sorry. Okay. Next on the agenda is the first reading of right. Ordinance 2023 008. Reestablishing the Coombe Cap Development Fund. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we reestablish the CCD Fund Ordinance 2023 008. I'll second that. It's been moved by Ms. Rashardi and seconded by Mr. West. Discussion, please. Well, I'm against it only because everybody, uh, and I say only, everybody's gotten their tax bill this year. And if uh, your tax bill looks like what mine did, my assessed value went, valuation went up 36.8%. My taxes went up 44.4%. Uh, this is also an election year. Uh, I don't see raising the uh, uh, taxes in an election year. Uh, the, People are hurting. I mean, you know, yes, we are fortunate to live in a resort town, but, uh, you know, when your property tax goes up 44% and you're on a fixed income like me and my wife are, I'm sorry, you know, these things can just wait another year. That's my point. Just a, just a point on the tax bill. Well, the, <clears throat> well, the assessed value went up all across the board because of the market value of sales of the homes in Culver, um, our tax rate actually went down. It went down from, I think, 1.7 to 1.6 7, I believe. Somewhere in, in that, that range. range. Yeah. Um, and and the, the increased taxes are, I mean, are, it's unfortunate um, that we all have to pay those, but it is a, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's a cost of the, the market value of our homes, which is, which is positive. And it's just not in Culver. I mean, all the cities and towns in Marshall County, those uh, taxes went up, uh, whereas the farmland did not. Now, some of the farmland will probably go up next year. Uh, and this it's a back and forth uh, teeter-totter every few years. It's a little tangential, but one of the things we, you know, we may want to offer is some type of um, property tax 101 class and let people learn about um, how the assessed valuations work. And then also what the opportunities are for exemptions from that. Um, there are a number of exemptions and everybody should make sure that they're taking advantage of the exemptions that they're entitled to. As a homeowner exemption is the most prevalent one sure. who live here full time. That could lower your asset value by over $100,000 so you can have that. Um, now, in order to have that, you have to be a full time resident. Um, and it has to be your permanent residence, um, not just in this state, but in any state. Or, um, neighbors may think, but um, I think that, um, you know, there are also 
there is a discount for senior citizens. It's income based. There's a discount um, for several other things that people should explore with the assessor's office. I uh, I'm not going to vote for a tax increase in the middle of inflation period that we have right now. I don't think it's fair to people, and uh, I don't think that you absolutely need that as much as they do. Roll call, please. Mr. Clevenger. Aye. Mr. Gibbons. Nay. Mr. Ham. Nay. Ms. Ricciardi. Aye. Mr. West. Aye. Three eyes, two nay. Karen, um, can we have a, a, a second, third read and we're done? All right, okay. All right. Next on the agenda is the council appointment to the Culver Redevelopment Commission. Lily? You want to introduce yourself and tell us about yourself? Sure. Yeah. I'll hang on here for <clears throat> Hi, my name's Lily Arzola. Um, I am a lifelong resident of Indiana, and I uh, want to join the Redevelopment Commission because I feel like we need some young blood in the mix. And I also think that um, some new ideas, some fresh ideas, some, I feel like I can contribute to that. Um, um, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've, I've been in this town my whole life and I've always wanted to see it grow and prosper. I've uh, worked in the restaurant industry right here in town for 15 plus years and um, trying to get out of that <laughs> and um, get more involved into the town and contribute, basically. Active with the schools? Yes, yes, I'm active with the school. Uh, this year I'm helping uh, coach softball for the Little League, and I'm always into, you know, contributing to the town and, you know, looking for growth. Questions? <laughs> Any questions, uh, Lily? Yeah. Volunteering your service. Yeah, so absolutely. That's, that's always a positive thing. Yeah. Now that is uh, well, Willie, it's my pleasure as the president of the town council to appoint you. Uh, no, oh, it's it's, it's, council. it's council appointment. Yeah, I beg your pardon. Okay. okay, I'll make a motion to appoint. Uh, okay, Sally, yeah. Ms. Rashardi moves the, for the appointment. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Gibbons and Mr. Ham. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, aye. congratulations. And thank you for stepping forward. Next on the agenda is the Sand Hill Paddocks Tax Abatement. I provided to you um, earlier this week and then today um, tax abatement forms. Um, it's basically a check in for both uh, the paddocks, um, Sand Hill, and then ACPI or Cabinet Works also has. Uh, tax abatement uh, several years ago. So if you um, are okay renewing those and um, approving, basically what you're doing is um, approving that either the property owner is in substantial compliance um, or the property is not in substantial compliance. Um, and then this information is passed along to the I would just need a motion. Yeah. Um, I, I would probably split them out. So there's one for Sand Hill Farm, one for the paddocks, and one for the cabinet works um, abatements because cabinet works in this. Make a motion we approve the one for ACPI. Second. Been moved by Mr. Githens and seconded by Mr. West to approve the one for is it ACPI? ACPI. ACPI. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? Or did they only have one or did they have two also? ACPI, I believe it's two. Did they have the equipment? There's one that's falling out, yeah. There's one for um, personal property. 
Are you comfortable with just one motion on that? I guess it's good. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah, for the whole yeah. ACPI. Well, I understand. No, that's fine. fine. All right. No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those same sign. Granted. And then one for the paddocks and one for Sandhill Farm. Okay. I make a motion that we approve the, um, the application or the filing of the forms from Sandhill for the tax abatement. Mr. West made the motion to approve the Sandhill. Ms. I'll second. Mr. Rosari seconds. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those same sign. Thank you. And then the paddocks. Is there a motion to approve the paddocks? I'll make a motion to approve the paddocks. Uh, Mr. Shardy moves to approve the paddocks. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Ham. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passed. Thank you. I'll get those uh, turned in. Okay. Thank you. Next on the agenda is a special event request, Kiwanis Pen Day, June 17th, 2023. Sign out that permit. Uh, signed by all the uh, department heads. Uh, it's pen Day for the Kiwanis. We use, we utilize the corners at Academy Road, Lakeshore, Main, Jefferson, for donation, Main. What are the times? Um, nine, to nine to one or something like that. Seven thirty to twelve thirty. Thank you, man. Yes, since all the department heads have signed off on that, I make a motion to approve the Kiwanis application um, for the June seventeenth solicitation. Mr. West moves to approve the special event permit for the Kiwanis Pen Day. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Githens. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Request approved. Wet that back, Wayne. Okay. All right. Next on the agenda is the town manager search. I had a conversation last night with Mr. Ripley. He's informed me that we've had uh, two applicants so far, one of which is a current town employee, and another was a gentleman from North Carolina. And he uh, mentioned that uh, he's going to do follow up with both of these individuals. Um, but other than the two that we have right now that he's received, we haven't had any others. And uh, according to him, the process is still kind of hard to find applicants. He did have one that he wasn't even going to pass on to us. So from that point, um, I, I would suggest that from that point, I would suggest that we uh, postpone any further discussion on this until the 23rd, until we have a chance to uh, hear more from Mr. Ripley. But Council, have any questions? Go ahead. I agree. So, okay. okay. So you're saying between now and the 23rd, he's going to interview these people yeah. and come back with recommendations? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And of course, during that period of time, he may still get. Yeah, he could. Yes, absolutely. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But at least we have two. So the door is still open. Yeah. Okay. Next on the agenda's department head report. Jeff, you want to report for EMS? I have nothing to report to you. Okay, thank you. Fire just left the room. Wayne? Okay, the Park, Amber? Uh, yeah, just a few things. Sorry, I'm looking. 
Um, so for the playground project um, and social gathering space project, uh, landscaping is the last portion of the project uh, for the construction. Um, I got the update that they should be out this week or next to do the landscaping. Um, I'm currently in discussions with Okra to get a ribbon cutting schedule. Um, it looks like it'll likely be early June, uh, but I'll keep you posted. It really depends on the Okra reps um, schedules. Um, I submitted a request with the Lieutenant Governor, but um, again, they told me not to hold my breath, um, but I'll keep you posted as we get that schedule. Um, and I do just want to make an announcement that although it does look completed, it is not. Um, the playground surface, the PIP surface is really sensitive. Um, we do have a fence around it, but I know it is enticing, but please stay off the surface and off the new grass, um, which is all covered in hay currently. Um, we're struggling to keep people off of it. Again, we know it's very um, tempting, but please encourage others to stay off. Um, the Beach Lodge Middle Office painting project, that's all completed. It looks really nice. Um, the Lighthouse project, um, I do know the Lighthouse is looking like it needs some fixes. I'm in the process. We're working on getting some quotes together to get that done. Uh, please be patient with us that we're finding some more water damage than we would have liked. So um, we'll keep you post. I'll keep you posted on that. But again, patience is appreciated at this time. Um, the elevator project. I received one quote for the sub pump pit, and um, I had a site visit from another company, and just waiting to hear back there. So water is our issue at the moment. <laughs> Um, and then other than that, our parking lot is all completed. If you haven't had a look, it matches everything very nicely. We're in the process of moving signs to appropriate parking spots, um, but we're really happy with how it turned out. Anything else, Amber? That's all, thank you. Amber, where are, where's the uh, farmer's market? What's the status on what they're doing and when, yeah. where and why? Until the grass seed is grown, um, we don't really want them, them in that area. It's going to take a few weeks. So until then, they're relocated to the uh, basketball court okay. until further notice. But Tracy and Chad do a really good job of updating. As soon as that happens, I'm sure they'll be posting it on TGL and social media. Yeah, that, I think that's important. That people, yeah, that what you're saying about the grass and everything. Yeah. You need We're to trying to keep people off for at least three to four weeks off of it. So it's gonna take some time. Thank you. Anything else, Amber? That's all, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Utilities, Bob. I just want to let you know for this evening, your trash company, or trash contract with Republic Services is due to expire. And I reached out to him for a one-year extension. He set back the $1.50 increase Per home. For what period? One year. Wow. And that's for both the uh, trash and recycle. As it is now, it would just be an increase with dollar fifty per home per month. No other changes. No other changes. That'll give you time for to month month decide what you want to do. Per month or per year? It's per month. <laughs> so, okay. Per month per mm -hmm. home. Sixty fifty per year. <laughs> Eleven thousand. I thought a hundred dollars a day. So we're going to need a motion to. Yeah, that, that's right. May uh, I have a motion to approve the dollar one dollar and fifty cent fee? Before you make that motion, there was talk of bidding it. <clears throat> the timing, I don't see. And, and they, they ran out of time. Right. <clears throat> So I would encourage you to make some findings that <clears throat> because you ran out of time in the bidding process, not allowed, and that you do need trash pickup, that sort of the exigent circumstances exist that you need to go along with this extension. And that's and then, why I only did a one year extension. Yeah, and then uh, also uh, that the uh, president be authorized to sign the extension agreement. Thank you. I don't want to make a motion. <laughs> I make a motion that we accept the dollar and a half month increase on the local trash service and authorize uh, the president of the council to sign it for a one year extension. Because? Because 
we didn't have enough time to uh, uh, fit it out and get supplies back in time uh, due to the uh, expiration date of the current contract. Thank you, Council. Thank you. I'll second it. It's been moved by Mr. Gibbons and seconded by Mr. West. <laughs> all, any discussion? If not, all those in favor of the uh, one year extension signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Karen Clark's report. Um, I have one claim over $2,500 that needs approval, and that's for Tim Uhas for peer removal or peer installation. Here, $9,750. So moved. moved. I'll second. Been moved by Mr. Guth and seconded by Mr. Shardy. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Post same sign. Meetings ago, Annette Hanning from Bon Marco County became a longer title. I'm you know, not giving her credit where credit is due. But she came and asked council if they would consider adding um, the prohibition of e cigarettes or the use of e cigarettes in the park. Um, no action was taken that night. And so I was, I'm asking you if you would like. I've, I've gone ahead and prepared an ordinance prohibiting the e-cigarettes, but I want to see if you guys are all supportive of that because I'm not going to go ahead and waste time if you're not going to do it. I don't know if we need a formal motion to do that, but I would, if we do, I would move that we work toward amending the ordinance for no smoking in the park to include the e-cigarettes. And I, and I would second them based on the fact that we're just amending the current ordinance as opposed to having to come up with a separate one. Been moved by Mr. West and seconded by Mr. Giffins. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. To Jim, and I think I sent a copy to it. Yeah, I think we can add easily add just that clause to that one section. Have it done. <clears throat> um, the electric vehicle charging station fees, just as a reminder, about a month or two ago. You all voted that you wanted to set that fee at three dollars per hour. I've gone ahead and prepared that ordinance and sent it to Jim for review. Um, there is a public hearing scheduled for the uh, May 25th meeting, um, and so if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, Wait, May 23rd, isn't it? Not 20, May 23rd. Not 25th. Pretty sure. I keep looking at the wrong month on my calendar. So yes, May twenty third. May twenty third. Right. Sorry. Right. Right. Yeah. No. Um. Um. Townwide cleanup. Just to let everybody know, I I think there's still some questions. Um. We are doing townwide cleanup this weekend. However, instead of bringing your stuff to Bob at the water tower parking lot, Bob is going to come get your stuff. So put your stuff out at the curb this weekend. Everything you know, will take just about anything. The only things that you will not take are tires, hazardous waves, and paint. And if you need a place for paint, let me know. I can give you that information. I think it's this the recycling station. Sure, the employers will take your paint. Mm -hmm. um, so, there is time it should be on the curve. It needs to be out there. Yeah. So, please, I have a question. We're on the table. Okay. Oh, so you in the yep. All right, <laughs> so that's done longer. Ah. Enough that. Um, broadband ribbon cutting surf is uh, quickly moving through, and they contacted me last week about ribbon cutting. Um, I feel like I'm call tomorrow, so I will provide that information <laughs> to you all as far as what um, what we discussed. And um, they'd like to coincide that ribbon cutting with the first person in getting up there through the internet. So I'm not sure it's close. Um, and I think there were some questions too on how to sign up with SERP, and you, you should have received mailings. I know I've received a couple at home. So um, you would contact SERP directly. Um, start um, when 
<laughs> one of the topics when uh, employee retention was discussed um, was the Hoosier Start program, which is an additional uh, retirement savings opportunity for our employees, but it's at no cost at this, you know, the town could decide if they wanted to match, um, but they don't have to. So it's really no cost to the town. Um, but that's a um, a program through the state auditor's office. Um, I had a call to this afternoon about that. I've already forwarded you information on that program. And if you are open, I can go ahead, I will go ahead and prepare the resolution for the next meeting. So I don't know that I need a motion just to know that you're supportive of it and I'll move ahead. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. yeah. Okay. And then the final thing I have, um, I know there were some concerns when we uh, stayed with the current banking that the uh, interest rate available on money would exceed the interest rate on the savings account. There is a program for the state called Trust Indiana, and you can invest, you can deposit funds there. Um, I checked the other day and that rate has, is close to or has exceeded what our, our savings account or our LTCU is um, making right now. Um, if that is something that you would like me to do, or if you are, let's put it this way. If you all are supportive of me moving some of the funds to that program, I will go ahead and get that paperwork in there as well. Can you tell me what the rate is? Off the top of my head, no, but you can go to Trust Indiana and um, look at Trust it. Indiana's website and you can look it up. I thought, sorry, I thought you Trust Indiana. Yes. Stuff that you're saying yeah. about restrictions on timeline to withdraw all the funds. No, actually, it's, it's kind of like a, a savings. It's like a wire transfer or anything else. So, if there's something that you want to do that's a little bit more aggressive, we will need to form uh, an investment board. Right. So, I don't know if that's something that you all are interested in participating on, but I'm going to leave that ball in your court. So, if you're okay with that, I will gather more information. I will get stuff prepared for Trust Indiana. Okay. I'm in favor of Trust Indiana. Okay. Yeah, me too. Yep. All right. Yeah. I will get that prepared for the next meeting. And um, one other thing in reference to Mr. West, um, the comment about the property tax 101, there are some sheets out there of information that I prepared a couple of years ago. So the rates aren't necessarily current. I think they're like 2017 to 2019, but it gives you an idea about how um, property assessment works, how that all kind of funnels down to property taxes, the rates and how those are set. Um, updating those to the current numbers, but it was just one of those things this afternoon kind of hit me like that might be helpful. So um, I will get that together and I'll send that out on town down in the next, I'm going to say, but, um, and with any of this stuff, if you ever, ever have any questions, please reach out to me directly. I'm happy to, if I don't know the answer, I will look for the answer for you. I'm happy to discuss. Um, and I think people have reached out to me and I've, I've been responsive. So um, I hope that you'll just, you know, take the time to ask me some questions because I don't always know what's going to be said. So, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Attorney's report. Um, oh. Here's a comment. I, I went up, uh, it was uh, a day in Caden, the property taxes. And I went to the, the post office and she said, your country, they're going to be combined instead in mortgage exemption to be one deduction rather than two. She said, she said that. She thought at this point in time that it would be a better rate for everybody, but that's what the, the plan is from the state is to combine the two more easily and publish them. Just uh, whoever cares. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, and, and just on the tax issue, Bill had mentioned the tax bill that we all received probably in late March. Um, first payment is due tomorrow. Um, but on the back of that, there's a lot of useful information there. The, the second page gives where the tax dollars go. So it'll show how much of your tax dollars go to Union Township, to the town, to the library, um, to all of the local taxing entities. Also on the back of that yeah. school form, yeah, school. on the back of that form in section five, I think it is, it talks about the um, the exemptions that, that you can get and are entitled to. And then just the last thing is, within the last week or two, 
if you have property that is taxed in Marshall County, you will get the blue form notifying you of next year's assessment. It's actually this year's assessment payable in um, 2023. Um, and there's a, a deadline for appealing that, which is June 15th, I believe. So, Various report. Thank you. I got just a few things. Um, <clears throat> the uh, petition by the neighbors uh, against the loft uh, project is set for a case management hearing on May 25th. Uh, so lawyers on both sides and uh, we will be participating in and making arrangements and kind of setting out the process for going forward on both the petition for um uh, against the DZA and also against the Planning Commission. <clears throat> the Culver neighbors for responsible development case against town and the Dunes development. The hearing, I think I told you I thought it was going to be set for June 2nd, and once I was correct, it is set for June 2nd morning. Um it's going to be conducted in uh, Elkhart. But I uh, I checked and I think we would you'd be able to access it online if you so choose, and I'll be sure to send the link to all of you so you have it if you want to take a look at it. Um, you know, it's it's not a time for taking evidence. It'll be a time just for arguing the motions to dismiss and and seeing what the judge thinks he's going to do with that. Um, you probably miss hearing from us because there haven't been any new motions for the last couple of weeks, but uh, <laughs> email from, from Bobby yesterday. Oh, did you? Oh. I'm sorry, your name. Well, anyway, it might have been one that I forgot to send to you that Jeanette did, I think. I don't, but anyway, uh, so that's that's that situation. Um, as for the, um, uh, the, the project and the and the grant and the tip thing, uh, we've been sort of treading water with that till we find out where we are on the June 2nd business. Uh, we didn't want to get too far in front of ourselves and then have something surprising. So uh, once the judge rules on the 2nd, we'll, we'll know more for sure one way or the other, and uh, we'll know a little better how to proceed on that particular item. Um, and then just kind of a FYI that you might not have anything. I'm working with uh, your clerk treasurer to uh, get an FSSA form. The General Assembly tweaked the opioid statute and and they did some other things, but uh, it, you're now required to fill out this form that FSSA supposedly is coming up with uh, to say where you use the restricted funds. And since you guys uh, pledged some of the Project Hope, uh, we'll need to complete that form, explain that's what's going on. Um, I think I sh shared with you too um, the time for the pharmacies to decide whether they were going to go forward with their global settlement got pushed back uh, till sometime this month. Uh, but it looks like uh, with the participation that that's probably going to go forward. Uh, town's not going to get as much money as with the distributors and the manufacturer of the opioids, probably about two thirds maybe uh, of about the same money spread out over five years or seven years, depending on which pharmacy it is. And uh, it'll be the same thing though. You'll have 70% of it coming in that'll be used for restricted purposes and 30% that you can use for whatever you want to use. So uh, I'll keep you kind of up to date with that and Karen and I'll keep working on those items. And with that, that's all I have. Thank you, sir. I have a question. Um, the state statute that um, is requesting the distribution of those opioid funds for small towns that under, was it $5,000? Yeah, it's now going to go to the county. county. I think our unrestricted fund, at least what we have in the bank, is under five. It's a, um, restricted is right. But this is new funds coming in. Is, okay. And if you're if you're going to get more than is it three thousand or five thousand? What I read it's was a five. five. Okay. Five. What what was your 
how much did you get on the first year? And the balance in there is about forty seven or forty eight hundred dollars by the number. But you but you, but you used seventy percent of it. But that was two years. But it, it, it basically they the attorney general didn't want to send small checks to small towns, so it's going to send your check to the county and. I'm not sure there's good direction on how it works that the county sends you your money and you get it from the county. I've been asked to kind of check that out. So that that will follow it if that's the case. Potentially we may not have any unrestricted funds, I guess is where I was going. You will well if it if if it goes to the county and the county's supposed to pay you, you'll still end up with unrestricted oh. funds. So the unrestricted funds that we received was 4668 and the restricted funds that we received was 10,800. But I see, I think that was a two year payment on the distributor. Mm -hmm. Well, they paid it all at once, but it was for, it was for a two year period, two -year period, two -year period of time. Period. And that, and as I said, what you're going to get from the pharmacies is going to be uh, about two thirds of what you say you had. Uh, 10 and 4, 14. So, yeah. You, you may very well be, if you get two thirds of that amount, you should get a check. We'll see. Thank you. The totally shut off or ordinance violation. Anyone in the room? You go. Uh, my name's Justin Croya, like William Lifelong resident of Culver. Um, April 12th, I was given a, a uh, golf cart violation. And um, kind of the situation that unfolded what, is what brought me here today. But the more that I kind of dug into it, um, I noticed a few things. The first thing is that this um, part of the ordinance was amended, was never updated on the town's website. It wasn't my golf cart. It wasn't registered to me, so I wouldn't have received the updated form. So the only way that I would have known what our golf cart rules and regulations uh, are would have been to get on the website, um, and, and which we did before leaving, uh, and that this particular one was not listed on there. Um, and then the second one, and this may be a, a discussion for uh, the next the next item on the agenda, but. Um, Personally, from a from a parent standpoint, I feel like this is a more of an unsafe amendment to the violation um, than than before. This is this is my daughter Ellie. She is exactly 36 inches tall. So just in case we're unaware of what 36 inches looks like for a for a, a she golf cart. So yeah, one. this is the minimum height to uh, right. ride on a golf cart in the town of Culver. And right, although, and although she needs. You say hi. Although she meets those those standards or the rules that we've set, right? She lacks the capacity to understand. Hey, I need to hold on when the golf cart stops, and I need to do those things. So, as proactive parents, we had her sitting on my wife Hannah's lap. Our son was at, at back home with grandma. We went to the root beer stand, came back, got a violation for having her on on uh, uh, her mom's lap, and I so we put from, her in the back seat and she started climbing. You're right. Kind of so <laughs> from, a, from a safety standpoint, I know that, and I've actually spent the last uh, about 48 hours searching multiple towns in the state of Indiana to see if there's anything similar as far as uh, minimum height requirement. And what I found is there's uh, several towns that have done minimum weight requirement or ages older than two. Some have three, some have six. Obviously, every town's different, but nobody was was at the 36 inch mark. Um, so from a from a you know a citizen standpoint, not not understanding that that was that was our rule at the time. Um, I know this says uh, Mr. Clevenger that I have the right to a trial for my offense. So my my hope is today that that just gets that gets uh, dismissed. But whatever, uh, as the as the town attorney, I know you have yeah what, the recommendation. You, Wayne, are you prepared to? address the challenge of the ticket here today yes the officer that pulled it over wrote today's date on like you have today yeah no, that and that was another it, yeah, it said okay. to appear today 
I, I think you have the right to have this body be heard, but we also have to give due process so that, you know, let the officer know if he wants to come and give his side of what's going on, your side of what's going on. I suppose they have a right to do whatever, but if it's denied, then what happens is it gets turned over and we file it in court and you have a judge then that also has a chance to rule on it if you want to do it that way. Is that needed if it's from a board standpoint, if that wasn't listed on the if web? The, if the board decides that your your violation was unwarranted, that they can take action to you know, do their thing. Yeah, I believe it's updated because I brought, um, yes. I came in to talk to Karen yes. that day and I was like, this isn't on the website. And it, so I think she updated it that day. It isn't on the section that said under golf cart registration, it did not say, and I think I sent you an email out to that right. effect, that it did not say passengers must be proud. Right. And they had to be passengers like, are not to hold passengers on their lap while the vehicle is in operation. I believe it said something about being seated. So I mean, I just had to alert you that for another reason. I did a search on that on the, the town website and it came up with what I thought was the reason of ordinance. If you picked on the ordinance, I thought it was within the ordinance. It's within the ordinance. Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. Right. That's fine. If you know, it wasn't in the summer. Yeah, it was. The well, reason it, it just was, and I was like, oh, it wasn't in the, in the ordinance on that day, correct? Even it was in the ordinance on that day. It just the page that you went to okay. said okay. golf cart registration. Okay. And it just, you know, we threw some stuff up just to make people aware that, you know, these are the changes when that were made in 2020, I believe. Yeah. Um, but the actual ordinance is then in under ordinances. Okay. Thank you. So are you wanting to sort of challenge that, I guess, and challenge the you know, I mean, it, it's one hundred and fifty dollars. My largest concern is the safety of our, you know, of our citizens and of our families. And and you know, being a young family, we have a two-year-old and a four-month-old. And I know that we that that is most likely in place to keep fifteen-year-olds from riding on each other's lap back and forth through town and acting like fools. And but in this particular situation, <laughs> they never do that, right? In this particular <laughs> situation, it kind of it kind of applied to us. And so. Um, I guess my my concern is is more of a discussion on what we can do to you know make those rules maybe either more specific or um, figure out something for for children to address children directly and of course it'd be great not to have to pay one hundred fifty dollars to uh, for something that is as minimal as that I, I I can promise you that that's not going to be something that I'm going to take to Marshall County Court to take any of your time or any of his time or any of those yeah, but if you want to take it to the council's time, then we need to schedule it another time for you to come back and also, you know, the police and everybody get kind of organized. Another meeting where you go with the officer. Which that officer told us he wouldn't be offended if we did that. So that would be, do you want to come back and talk about it? Um, that's why we can, we can do that. I'm, you'd like to schedule a time to, yeah, have the officer here and talk again. It's kind of a quasi little right, trial, right? Would it right. Be like? Yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. Let's let's do that unless we want to. Yeah, I, that I, based yeah, on I'm gonna schedule it as a special meeting ahead of a meeting. Uh, well, I think Wayne has a question. My suggestion is what we just have come on first day, which is a with any violation or incumbency. Put the next meeting, and that we set it up prior to prayer council meeting, like mm -hmm. five thirty or something. Have the officer here at that time. What's council's opinion? I, I agree with that. Set it up five thirty or five forty-five, and yeah. you know before the next council meeting, twenty-third. You'd be able to have the officer here when? Okay. And I don't disagree with setting up before the next meeting and so forth, but I outside of the meetings, I don't think you can make decisions. Can we? No, you cannot. Right. So it's either we do a work session on it and then bring it back and enter information at the council meeting or we bring the council meeting five thirty and make it part of it. I think in my correction. Yeah, I I, th I think you just schedule it and and have everybody, you know, 
if they want to submit set up stuff ahead of time, fine and dandy. But I think just get it for five thirty, take the evidence, and, and then you give them give a report at six thirty. No, no, you can if you call a special meeting, you can give oh, okay. Special meeting. Yeah, because you can vote in a special meeting, you can't the work session. Right. right. So we'd be. So we'd have a special meeting at 5 30. Yeah. Karen, could you uh, put notice out for us okay. meeting at 5 30 to address the uh, ordinance violation? Yeah. You got their name, right? Yeah. I'll make them. I'll make a motion. Yeah. 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 I understand. I assume. Right. So 530 on the 23rd. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know if this goes into that part or not, but something to think about for the ordinance is there's no rules anywhere that I found to have seat belts on golf carts. If you're going to make her sit by herself without a seat belt, someone turns a corner, jumps out in front, you hit the brake, she's going forward, you take off, she's going off the back, she's turning, she's going off to the side. Just something to think about. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> she likes to climb, so climbing over seats. 36 inches is one year old, two year old. So. A lot of a lot of towns in Indiana are going uh, have, uh, and I, I searched just about every one I could find. <clears throat> forty eight no children so no children under forty eight pounds that would require a child safety or strength seat are permitted to ride on a motorized cart. So basically, anybody in a car seat, um, and she's still in like a booster seat uh, until she's forty eight pounds, mm -hmm. then then she could go to a golf cart. Now they make car seats that go to. They go on golf carts and I, you know, by no means am standing up here saying, hey, let's not put, you know, people, people can do what they feel is best. Uh, but I know that what we have as far as just a, a minimum height requirement and is is not she was like, like my wife said, she was 30 was 36 inches before she would even turn two. So <laughs> one year olds on golf cart is. There's an exception and she, she may be one of 10 kids in the state that. Uh, Really tall on yeah, it was was 36 inches before she was two, but it it may happen. So okay, so the, the motion for set a special meeting for May 23rd at 5:30 a.m. Made the motion. Second. Been moved by Mr. Githens and seconded by Mr. West to have a special okay. session at 5:30 on the 23rd of May. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Anyone, uh, Scott, anything more? Okay. Anyone online? Hearing none. Council issues, Mr. West. Citizen, citizen input. input. You still have citizen input. Oh, any, anything more on citizen input? Called about Victus in the 424 Forest Place. As Bill, Sally, Rich, I respectfully disagree with the raising of more tax. Not necessarily the amount. This is, I was reading this. All the items that you listed, are actually the vast majority of the items that you listed under the cumulative capital development fund, infrastructure. Cavalier Park, Beach Lodge, Fire Truck, Flying Levy, Fire Radio Gear, EMS. They're all things that the Redevelopment Commission has participated with. They have provided funds in support of the town. You could have gone to them, talked to them about this. You could have probably I found a way to move some budget money to cover these things. I say that from my own experience, when we were looking at moving funds during COVID to leave town pressure on trails. Additional funds were moved. Bill Clevenger, you and I were on CRC. You made a recommendation to award to EMS an amount above what they're asking for, for their new ambulance. There is precedent and the ability for CRC 
to relieve this pressure. I agree with Bill Ham and with Bill Gittins. I can afford this, but a lot of people can't. And now is not the time. CRC gets over $600,000 a year in revenue funds and tax funds. They have over a million dollars in their bank account now. They fund many things. They fund forest ads that are placed. This year, they have funded up to $25,000 on a housing study. While we have housing developments and developers coming to talk to us. I believe we should raise taxes when it's necessary. I personally believe we should have looked at CRC and finding a way to shift tax burden so you can meet these needs without putting this on other people. This may change two years from now, but it, it appears to me that there are opportunities here to not fold this load. Well, Paul, it was defeated. I understand. And okay, thank you. Let me finish this. It's the only time as a citizen I can give input after you've raised my taxes. Thank you. Anyone I, else? I would mind uh, saying one thing that the with the CRC, they have changed their rules uh, statewide where they no longer they take a dim view, I guess it's how I would put it, of now using CRC money, redevelopment TIF money, to pay for fire trucks, ambulances, et cetera. Uh, that ruling came out last year. So that is removed. From now on, there will be no more. Right, and that's one reason that the C CCD fund, you know, could then be used for that. And that's my thoughts on raising so, that. Allowing me to ask a clarifying question. You have gone back, you've gone to the Redevelopment Commission, went back and looked at any way of not being able to transfer any funds in support of any other projects. There's are still development for trails, there's still other, other projects that both the Council and the Art for the Redevelopment Commission funds that they couldn't find relief, that the Redevelopment Commission yeah. didn't pick up more of that. You're telling me that you've done that. You, you looked at all that before you decided to raise to so increase here, the taxes here. I'm not going to get into a you know discussion of the way you voted, the way I voted when we were on the CRC. I'm just asking for clarity. Because you said, you know, yeah, I'll you, have take it as a yes. You said at one you time, know. at one time, Paul, you uh, when it was brought for the CRC to fund the infrastructure. A portion, you know, mm -hmm. you said, well, the town should have skin in the game and only voted to support 50% of the match, mm -hmm. which meant that the town then had to pick up that match. So, Sal, if you're saying I put the town in this position, just go ahead and say that out loud. Is that what you think? No, I'm not saying if we're not in any position. This is a matter of you know, it's the tax rate for the CCD fund was at five cents for years, and it's and each year it drops. If you don't re re approve it, then it continues to drop. When you approve it as or reestablish it at five percent, then now they may change the law, which or the rule. Now you can keep it at 5% and you don't ever have to reestablish it. So you don't have to reestablish it every few years. And basically, you know, we just, you're talking, or I would say, I don't know if 250,000 is the average home, but that's between that and Five or six hundred thousand is probably the average home in Culver, and you're talking an additional tax of fifteen dollars each year. And I don't 
to reestablish it. Now, you know, I don't have any problem, you know, of not reestablishing it. We'll survive, but that it's going to keep that 30,000 is, you can't use it for building, uh, you know, like uh, remodeling one of the buildings. You won't be able to use, you know, because it's going to be 30,000 less than what, what it, or 20,000 less than what we currently are getting or what we would be getting at five five percent or five cents respectfully disagree like yeah. i said at the beginning well as i say everyone has the opinion but i do know that uh, the state doesn't want us to use i'll look it up for i'll look it up for you and send it to you Yes. Patty Stallings, 506 East Lakeshore Drive. Um, we are here last year a little late in budget time, so I'm here earlier in budget time. <laughs> I had the seven half picture of the seven windows uh, last year on the west side of the fire station, and uh, I don't know where they went. They're probably here somewhere. But anyway, I did copy one. It's <clears throat> It represents all seven of them. You, you remember seeing them all, all of you. Yeah. So I was, um, when I um, came last fall, it was too late. We said, please approach, the, you know, the fire department budget. So I am doing that. Uh, I, I've sent Terry a couple things. He didn't get back to me, which you very busy, obviously. But I just um, want to know what my next step is. If Terry isn't interested in uh, improving this situation, um, if he doesn't, when will I know if he doesn't put it, if he does or doesn't put it on the budget? And another thing is that um, we have talked about replacing the glass or breaking it in like they've done in other parts of that building. But Mike had another idea that, he, that would be acceptable to us and a lot less expensive. Well, instead of brick, which is a very expensive solution, uh, something like a, uh, a cedar insert that would make it look like, for one of another term, closed shutters or something like that. That would, even, I mean, that building is. If you look at the picture, you can see how bad it looks. We look at our windows every day and see it. Unfortunately, so, that's the only ones that do. <laughs> well, and it's the other side of it is it's there's no really no uh, insulation in there to speak of. So doing something even uh, with a uh, wood insert instead of uh, instead of the brick would be a lot cheaper and uh, improve the look of your own structure. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, you want me to introduce myself again? Yeah, please. Tom Oldenmeyer. Uh, I'm here basically because I've got a problem with the tree. And I've talked about this with Mike and, and he said that the budget consistently gets cut every year. And we all know that to take a tree down or to do something with the tree, it costs more money every year. And I've got a tree that, uh, that's dropping, I, they call it lichens on my roof. My roof is only 10 years old and it looks like it's 30 years old because this crap, you can't get it off of it. And then uh, the other thing is this tree has been marked for what, eight, 10 years, somewhere in that neighborhood uh, with the green dot and nobody seemed to know what the green dot is. I've been told it's a big tree down, it's to trim the tree, it's to look at the tree. I don't know what it is, but that, uh, I don't either. Something needs to be done with this tree because I put in this brand new sidewalk, which you guys paid some money for, and now the roots are starting to push that sidewalk up from this tree. And I don't know what to do about it. I, you know, it's on your property, say. So there's that, and then there's deadfall hanging the next house down. That uh, if it comes off this tree. It's going to land on somebody's car if they're parked there because it's right at the stop sign. And so 
my interest is in getting more money for the tree fund in order to fix these things because yeah planting trees is nice but uh, you got to take care of the trees that you got thank you sir mike what's your address again tom Tom, um, 321 West Marmont. Mike knows it very well. Yes. <laughs> it's on the list. I'm looking at, looking at Mike and calling you, Mike. Sorry. It's on, it's Sorry on about that, Tom. I've heard that for several years now, yeah. too. <laughs> Sorry about that. My apologies. 321 West Marmont. Yes. Thank you, sir. And it's on the west side of the house. Got it. Lee Marshall, four two four four. This might be just a question for Heather. I will open up names tonight. Um, Amber. Um, I might have missed a council meeting. Wasn't there something about those those rocks, those big stones that were going to be some proceeding in there? People were saying they might be unsafe. Did that ever get addressed? It did. Yeah. Um, we met with. I met with some council members. Um, another department head. And the contractors and the architect. Um, we happened to be meeting that Thursday. Um, we met and we discussed, and we decided to um, alleviate the uh, danger by um, cutting the corners of those stone rocks, those stone benches. So I think it's like a one and a quarter inch was taken off each corner of those four stone benches. Thanks. Yes, sir. Oh. Dave Arzol, the 519 South Plymouth. Um, I got a couple quick questions about, I thought that the town acquired the lot on South Main over by the water station. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, is there any plans on what might be down the pipe for what that might be developed into in the future? I know I've heard of a, a neighborhood being built nearby, possibly in the future. And I, with the redevelopment coming around, like, is there anything on the docket for that? Bob? Not so much yet. I mean, okay. I'm going to be drilling a well there mm -hmm. for a third well. Okay. But as far as any buildings, I don't know that the council's made any attention. I think part of that depends on depends on the well on where the well ends up yeah. being. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, I, you know, and, and how much space they need around the well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I didn't I didn't know if it was just going to be a parking lot or if there's plans to make it another building there or anything. I was just curious. Or a park, yeah, that'd be pretty nice. I think mean, once we get the well in first, okay, we'll know where we're gonna yeah. go. My, my other one was kind of on the same on that same trail of thought. Uh, over across from on Jefferson Street, across from the apartments, there's been that lot for sale that I guess before I ever lived here was a trailer park, and now it's 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 been going down in price since 2020 when they listed it at some god awful rate. And as their price is going down, and me and our tax just went up a hair, is there any? designs on acquiring that property for the town because i've always looked at that and thought it might make a nice park or you know built a billion buildings it might be nice to rent out to the town and it might make cross traffic between the lake and downtown which i know we've talked about i've heard in the past about businesses wanting more cross traffic and bringing more people there is there any designs on acquiring that at this point, but you no. have some influence on CRC, so you may. Exactly, he gets it. So that's all I got. It was just a couple of ideas I wanted to float around. But Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone on the line? Yeah, Bill, this is uh, Don Fox, 301 North Shore Lane. Um, I just had a question as we head into summer season uh, and a lot more visitors about the uh, stop for pedestrian signs for the uh, the brick crosswalks uh, and if those are going to get put back up. End of this month, they'll be up. Bob said end of this month, Don. Okay, thank you. All right. Anyone else online? I'm not trying to filibuster. I got one more though. Um, on our street, South Plymouth, since the trail was built, we've had a bit of an issue during summer, especially around peak season when I think the rental, the summer rentals get booked, where like around 4th of July, if you park on both sides, the street's impassable and 99% of the year it's not a problem. But when July 4th comes around Memorial Day, there's no, there's, there's no designated one-sided parking because they're 
didn't really used to need need to be one, but now there have been a couple of issues where I think the people on the block understand that everyone parks on the east side, like um, Mr. Patera lives on the corner, and we park our vehicle on on the on the same side. But come summer, especially a lot out of towners, without a designation, they don't really know. So is there a way that we could paint the west side of the curb yellow, or at least? Or, or a no parking sign or something because we have had issues where I'm trying to get home from work and I have to kind of like navigate around the blocks just to get to my driveway or the cops have to come and ask someone to move or something and a headache. Which house do you live in? Uh, 519 South Plymouth. So we're, we're one street off of Main Street and the big issue comes when if there's any kind of blocking of Main Street, people use our street as a relief to right. the late mm -hmm. public access. And that's really where it comes an issue because the boats and the trailers mixed with people parking on the side makes for some really tight spaces. And now we have pedestrian traffic too with the trail. So now we've got bikes and dogs and cars all at the same time on that street. It can get really hectic in the summer. So just throwing that out there. We, we actually have the same problem on Forest Place. And so Forest Place is one, yeah. uh, parking on one yeah. side only for that very reason. Yes. I live on Wingfield and we got the same problem there. And we've been pressed on the streets. Oh, sure. Putting bullshit and signs. The one that we've just been talking about. I know, but both sides got same with the street. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah. That's no fun. Some of the parks. Okay. Yeah. 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 I didn't know there's more to the story, but always has. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not alone here. I'm glad I got some something. So you do. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know is there any ordinance about people parking their motor homes on on the street and blocking well, traffic? Uh, no, I looked into it. Karen is well aware of my situation because she deals with it too. Uh, my neighbor has the habit of bringing his big motor home and parking it right there at the corner. And it's hard if you come up that street to look and see if there's any cars coming from the other way. And then on occasion, he pulls out his, his slide out just enough so that, uh, uh, you know, he can access that area a little bit better and it stays out there. And, and according to, uh, he says that they aren't using it. Well, why do they have, uh, Dubs sitting down there pumping water out and, and electric plugged into it. If they're not using it, then, you know, I, why is it sitting on the street? Okay. Yeah. I just don't know. I, you know, it, it is a hazard for me if I come up that Marmont Street, I can't see to the right mm -hmm. and see anything. <laughs> of course, he's online. He's raised the building commissioner. Steve, are you online? He's not even okay. All right. On to council issues and actions, Mr. West. No, he's Mr. Guthens. A uh, couple things. Uh, back when we were, the lady came and talked about vaping in the park, where we had some questions from the audience about uh, what the process was or what the status was at the local library. And uh, I went back as president of the library board, went back and checked with our library director. And uh, we do have a no vaping uh, in our ordinance or with, with the library. So we, we got it in there because I did not know. And I said I would check and I just want everybody to know that we don't, just like we don't allow smoking in or around the building, we don't allow vaping either. So let everybody know about that. The other thing I have is if you read WTCA, this morning, uh, Lutheran Hospital is putting in a clinic across the uh, street from uh, St. Joe in Plymouth, and it will be open Monday. And initially, it's going to be uh, Lutheran Hospital out of Warsaw. They're going to have a doctor here like three days a week for a while. And then hopefully, I'm going to say uh, probably over the next 90 to, days to six months, they're going to have a, right now it's a traveling doctor, but they're going to and they're searching to have it fully staffed. So gives us another uh, uh, medical facility that 
people can take a aware of. So just let everybody know about that. That's all I have. Thank, Thank you, you. Sally. I don't really have anything further. Bob, I have a quick question. Um, on the surf internet, when they it seems that they talk about zones and, and so forth. Phases. Well, not phases, but geographically, mm -hmm. where are these? Phase four is the southern end, that's completed. Okay. Phase three is the next section up, like Ohio and Mill. Phase two is up and through here, and phase one is up Lake Parkway, Academy Road, up in that neighborhood. Okay. Bill? Yes. If you go on the SURF site, click on construction, you should get page that shows you of all three states, click on Indiana, click on Marshall County, and then you have to drill down on that map and you can see exactly where what they call them service areas. Okay, thank you. I have nothing else. Mr. Ham. I have nothing. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Mr. Githens. Moves to adjourn. Mr. West seconds. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 You got it down.